Hey guys, I thought it would be a good time to do an update on the Three Sisters Garden and show you how everything's coming along. So let's get right to it. Alright, I told you guys that I planted the radishes in between the rows of corn and they grew up nice. I harvested just a ton of icicle radishes. The purpose of the radishes was to hopefully keep the vine borer squash uh, away from the squash plants. But those little radish seed bods, they're really good. So there's still lots of good eating on them. The beans are doing real good. Um, unlike last year, I had the issue with the bean beetles and the deer and everything coming in and eating all my beans up. They hardly have been touched. When these beans first started getting growing, I saw that the deer had came through and nibbled on them a little bit on the plant itself. But once it grew up and got all thick like this, that ended. And now I just have lots of good, fresh green beans. I just went through two days ago and picked all of the beans in here and there's already a bunch more. And these beans are well over my head. There's a nice fresh Kentucky Wonder green bean. Now I planted some Lab Lab beans in here as well but they didn't grow. None of those germinated at all whatsoever so don't know what to say about that. Let's see if I can get through here. Now I consider part of the Three Sisters the amaranth because amaranth is actually a companion plant to corn, believe it or not. I know there's a lot of corn farmers out there that would uh, shrug at the thought of that. But when you're growing in a situation like this where you're not using machinery, it is actually beneficial to have some amaranth growing in with your corn. And Native Americans grew amaranth as a food source as well. I apologize for the shoddy camera work, but I'm kind of trying to fight my way through here because everything's so thick now. The marigolds, I just broadcast these marigolds. I didn't plant them in the ground or nothing. I just took the seed, head, seed heads from last year's marigolds and just broke them apart and just kind of let the wind take them and blow them wherever they went. And they are just off the hook. They're all over. These are French marigolds. There's orange. There's kind of a sunburst orange. There's yellow and kind of every color in between. Almost a, almost a red. They're doing great. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I just ate some hot peppers and they're still kind of choking me up a bit. But there's some more beans. Yeah, I'll pick that little bitty one. Got to keep these beans picked or they quit producing. Mm. More of those radish seed pods. Get them when they're still green and crisp. Man, they go great in a salad, too. More beans right there. See, I'm going to have to get out here and pick these beans. I'm, gonna, I'm overrun with beans. They're coming on so fast, I can't keep up with them. Again, I apologize for the cam work, but it's kind of tough getting through here. I let some ragweed grow, too, because this is actually... Uh, somewhat beneficial. I don't like letting too much of this grow because it can take over uh, and all the pollen is irritating. If you have allergies, ragweed is most likely the cause of it. But uh, I saw lots of ladybugs on this ragweed early in the season and I was picking it out and I thought, man, I think I'm killing off the habitat for those ladybugs. So I kind of tried to let a few stay growing here and there.
let's see uh, the squash I mean this is probably the worst example but it just didn't do anything next year I'm gonna plant the squash I believe I'm gonna plant the squash at the same time I plant the beans uh, this year I waited a week I may even plant the squash earlier because the squash I think what happened it's been a bad year for squash family plants in general cucumbers melons and uh, none of my squash did good in this garden or the other garden at my house so I think it's something to do with the season the excessive rain the uh, unusually cool weather I don't know but the other thing is I think that once these beans and corn started growing they really just shaded that squash out to where it couldn't really get a foothold and start taking off so I think the squash needs to go in a little bit sooner I'll have to experiment around with that and see now there's another thing growing here let's see if I can find some in this big uh, tangled mess maybe over here on the other side hold on Hey, here we go now these volunteer every year these are purple tomatillos and they usually get about as big as a golf ball uh, there's actually a little like kind of a cherry tomato inside of that husk but look at the size of some of these and I think it's because they're growing in with these uh, co with the corn that is just huge for a tomatillo I mean that's as big as a that's approaching the size of a baseball right there and they're growing all over throughout here they volunteer every year and I just let them grow let's see if I can get by this without breaking it over here more beans see this bean is getting a little too big nice thing about Kentucky Wonders though is you can let them go and then you just uh, get rid of the shell and dry the beans and you have uh, beans to eat versus just eating green beans and the nice thing about this garden is it's 100% natural didn't use any uh, fertilizer on it other than that nettle fertilizer in this last row here so I can just come out and uh, eat this stuff right off the vine another thing I noticed and I do believe it has something to do with the the tight crowding and the variety of plants but I just have tons of different kinds of insects I posted a, a few pictures on my Facebook page showing some of the insects that are in the garden and uh, other creatures but especially in the corn here I've seen at least five or six different tree frogs, leopard frogs, toads, probably, I mean you can hopefully see right there, probably four or five different kinds of bee, bees. Ladybugs, you name it. And I haven't seen one squash bug or vine borer moth or anything of that sort so I think it's a good combination just need to work out the details and uh, I'm thinking plant these squash sooner so they can get enough light to get a good start before the corn and beans grow up so high and shade them out But I wanted to show you that. I, I did that how-to on planting the Three Sisters Garden, and I thought it would only be uh, right to do a follow-up video. Yeah, let me show you the corn itself before I finish here. And I'm trying to get through here without crushing everything. Now, some of these beans, they didn't, they didn't manage to uh, attach to the corn stalks, so they're just kind of running around on the ground buried underneath everything but for the most part there's enough of them that did manage to go up the stock that uh, I'm pretty well overrun with beans let me get over here it's a little more open 
there's the corn I mean it's definitely producing ears these tassels are dry so this should be getting ready there's some more now some of this corn has red a reddish tinge to it and I don't know if that's a, a nutrient deficiency or if it's just something with the corn itself it doesn't all look like that but if you guys know you know please share um, because like I said, I really didn't do any fertilizing here except for this last row and I don't really see any difference between the two as far as that red coloration. But that's it. Squash, beans and corn, Three Sisters Garden. The corn and the squash, or I'm sorry, the corn and the beans are doing really well. Uh, just as good as last year or better. And this year I used no fertilizer. Last year I did fertilize. And the squash, like I said, they just didn't make it. There might be a couple in here, like, well, right here, I got a watermelon. It's actually vining out, but it's getting pretty late in the season. I don't think it's gonna have time to produce any fruit. And one other plant that I consider part of the three sisters, maybe a fourth sister, would be the sunflowers here. Because traditionally the sunflowers would be planted on the north end of the garden and that's what I have here and they're doing really well despite me trimming off half the leaves to try and get my cucumbers to grow that I was gonna plan on using the sunflowers as a trellis but that didn't work out but that's what this is about you know it's not about it's not about everything being perfect every time it's about doing it and uh, figuring out what works and what doesn't. All right, so to sum it up, the corn and the beans are doing great. The squash, not doing so good. I need to plant the squash earlier next year so it has a chance to take off before the corn and beans get too tall and shaded out. I didn't have to use any fertilizer I didn't have to use any bug spray or anything of that nature. The deer have stayed out of my corn and out of my beans. So have the raccoons, the squirrels, and everything else. I haven't had any animal damage or bug damage to speak of. So I think the Three Sisters Garden is a success. I just need to plant that squash earlier next year and I'll be all set. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments and support.